Hey you guys, it's your girl Dosh coming back to you from Real Takes. Uh, today I'll be doing a review to the movie titled A Quiet Place, um, starring John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. Uh, first and foremost, before I get into this, I just want to say how much I really enjoyed this movie. Um, seeing the teaser trailer and then the official trailer and then there was another trailer, I think overall three of them, I was excited for the the main premise of the movie being that this movie is done, which it's not considered a horror in my personal opinion, it's more of a thriller. And the fact that all these things that are actually happening within this movie are having to be done where there's no sound. And that was one of the things that stood out to me. Of course, when you saw the trailer, it shows them talking, of course, to the kids with sign language and all that. So that's what intrigued me first and foremost. So going in, you know, I look forward to how the storyline will progress, whichever. So with that said, I'm going to just jump into the review. Now, the way the movie starts off, it shows us that Earth has been invaded by aliens. And these particular aliens or creatures, if you want to call them alien monsters, um, they hunt and they hunt through sound. Uh, they are blind and I thought that was very intriguing whichever and all that because I was looking forward to you know trying to have more understanding okay what exactly is the overall premise of the hunt of what they're trying to do while they're you know here on earth now along with the movie comes the part where it shows um, the family you know doing a regular hunt for supplies you know the full Abbott family um, Lee of course is John's plays character Lee Evelyn's played by Emily's character and of course you have their three kids and just a note, um, with this particular um, situation, of course, they go through and they find some things. And, of course, their littlest one, he finds what looks like to be like a spaceship. Now, one thing I will say that I thought was rather interesting is the simple fact that um, when a family is kind of, you know, walking along, whatever, you would never want the child to be in the back. But that's, of course, how you see it even in the trailer. And unbeknownst to them, especially his sister, the little boy, of course, in the trailer, as you saw, he turns on the spaceship. And as you see the part where John turns around and he, he notices, he hears the noise and he sees that, you know, this creature through the woods as he's trying to pace to get to his son before him. And that's kind of where this traumatic situation happens that, you know, is a tragic situation in the family. And at that moment, it was considered day 89 after they had already invaded. So we fast forward to what looks like to be, if I'm not mistaken, it was like day 471. And it shows the family going through a regular routine, doing, you know, their everyday stuff, whichever, you know, how, you know, the mother's probably, you know, cooking food or the little daughter's helping her or she's in her room. The son's being helpful to his dad. You see parts where you see her, you know, washing clothes a certain way or the way she's cooking food, you know, um... Also, you know, just her teaching her son, you know, schoolwork and all that. It was just really nice. And, of course, there were scenes where you see them, you know, having dinner. And I love how they were engaged each other, of course, through sign language. Now, mind you, his daughter, and I want to get her name right. Her name was um, Reagan Abbott, but her real name is Millicent Simmons. She did an outstanding job. I enjoyed her in the movie. The kids were very well done. She, I enjoyed a lot. Now, she is the one that is deaf. And of course, being that they all speak sign language, you know, that's definitely a way for them to communicate. Now, she's going through a moment where she kind of, not to say she feels lost, or she feels very sad because she feels partly at fault for what happened, the tragedy that happened within the family. And um, the family loves her. She doesn't seem to see that at the moment, but, you know, as time goes on, of course, that does change. Uh, I like the part where her father's trying to engage her and help her to hear. He keeps trying to make certain, you know, earpieces that can help her to hear. And she just has a moment that she's just like, Dad, stop. Just stop. This is not going to work. So also you'll notice as that progression of over a year and a half has passed that now, um, Emily Blunt's character Evelyn is now pregnant and she's showing her going through the motions of, okay, now that we have this baby that will be coming here, she's keeping a calendar check of the date of when the baby's due. She's also setting up how the baby, whether where the baby will sleep and reside. Secondly, there was a key part in regards to that scene where she's noting that she um, wants to make sure they have something where the baby can breathe. They won't be hovering over the baby because the baby, most babies, you know, when they're born, they cry. They're not all of a sudden always, you know, quiet you know they let out you know their cries for a nice amount of period of time and they know this cannot happen with that creature out there amongst the woods so they have it set up for you know some type of breathing tube whichever so they basically are set now there's a scene where of course it extends where 
the, fa the father goes out and he takes his son. The son eventually doesn't want to go. He's already seen what the creature looks like. He's freaked out, whatever and all. But they were like, you know, you're strong, you're strong. The daughter wanted to go, but he kind of brushed it off. He's like, no, help your mother. And she kind of is upset because she just feels like her father. That's another way of him showing, you know, he doesn't want her around, but it's not the case. He wants his son to know things because he's like, if anything has happened, I want you to be able to take care of your mother. I want you to be able to, you know, be there for her, you know, stand up and be a stand up young, young man and know that she's, she's proud of her son. So he goes. Then he, you know, has his bonding moments with him. They go near a waterfall. He has him scream just to make him feel more at ease, like you're okay. They don't care anything with water sound. You're fine. They're not going to be able to hear over that. You're good. We're, we're fine. In the midst of all this, all of a sudden something happens where Emily's character, Evelyn, her water breaks. And that's when things really start to pick up with the movie. She's walking and something happens where she yanks out a pen. I will tell you that scene in there. And let me just say, us as moviegoers, since I said it was mostly based around not a lot, not a lot of sound, you can hear the sound of the audience. They're eating their popcorn, nachos, whatever you want to call it, drinking and all that. We're all intent into this movie we were very invested it was very nerve-wracking at times because it's just like what would they do to cause this you know type of entity or creature to come out you know and try to cause harm to them or hunt them so in the midst of that you know she has an issue where she hurts herself on her steps and she drops up i think we'll look at some sort of frame or whatever and that's all it needed so she's prepping herself because now she hears it it got into the house and now she's like, oh my God, now that my war breaks, I'm going to start having contractions and I got to be able to time it. So she had the timer, but of course that, that creature found her and, you know, she's trying to hide, you know, it sets off the timer because I think she was thinking it was probably every five minutes or whatever. And then it tries to ram it, whatever. And all by the time she's able to get upstairs. But if you recall the poster and the scene, she's in the tub by then her husband's getting back unbeknownst to her, her daughter decided she wants to rebel a little and leave. So it shows them coming back, whatever, and all that. And, of course, they set the lights up. So when the lights turn red with the, all the lights outside the house, that's to mean it's some trouble. So that's when the father and the son had to take charge. And the father made his son, like, help your mother. Your mother needs you. And he stepped to the plate because the boy was scared. And who can blame him? And that's when, you know, we have this scene where, you know, the creature's trying to crawl up and she's trying not to be loud, whichever, but her son sets off some firecrackers. And let's just say that it was at the right time because as soon as that part happened, it left and she was able to belt out the high, highest scream she could of being in, you know, discomfort pain. And, you know, of course, you know, the husband, you know, comes up and he shows and he has a shotgun and he shows up and it shows him, you know, coming here to try to see if she's okay, whichever and all that. She's fine. She's had the baby, but then they realize they need to get downstairs, whatever. The son is hiding, and he's like, okay, I'm going to stay hidden. You know, my father will find me. So he tries to hide her. And I love that they planned it enough that once this baby was born, they would have to find another secret hideout because they can't be out and open in the house. So they have an underground little area, you know, like a cell room of sorts underneath where they can hide it, even with the matches where they can't give up because the baby eventually, like I stated, starts to cry. And he has her settled, puts the mask, she's breathing. It's a boy, excuse me, you guys. And just from there, it was just a really good scene where they're kind of bonding. She's like, where are the kids? He's like, they're going to be fine. Let me find them. But see, by then, she's not realizing her daughter might have ran off with her. She's thinking she's somewhere hiding, whatever, and all that. And um, they end up seeing each other, the son and the daughter. I like the little tag team they did when they got into a situation because there's a key situation that happens with the daughter that sets the tone for a way they can finally get out of the situation they are with this particular uh, creature. And I love that it has to do with her her, her hearing piece, which was very, um, which was actually cool. I actually like that because some, some scenes were happening in this movie and trust me, we thought that she was down for the count, but a certain, you know, moment happened with her earpiece and it triggered something with the, the creature, which he ran off and then it happened again. So from there, you know, the father gets to the children and Things also start to happen where he's trying, the creature's trying to get to the kids, and he just realized he has to save his kids. And let's just say it was such a sad part, but um, it needed to be done. He knew once he did this, it would give the chance, the kids a chance to get away and get to their mother. And um, I can tell you, it was so sad. You could just hear the people in the audience, it was just so sad. But they got to their mother, the mother went downstairs, and she let them come in. And now the daughter, Reagan, can see all the things her daddy's been doing to help. You know, he has all these things written on the board. You know, what I can do to help this, you know, with my daughter. I have all these hearing pieces out to help her. And she didn't realize at the time, but her father loved her. He had made that clear prior to the incident that happens with him, which, you know, brings the death of him. And 
I love how he spoke to her to let her know, I love you. I want you to always know I love you, you know, for her to not simply think that her father blames her in any way. That was not her fault, you know. So, you know, moving forward, um, the scene where you see the mother getting the shotgun, the daughter, whichever, and all that, and the things are coming inside the house, wherever she's having her son hold the baby, and they're just trying to figure out how to deal with this. And this, that's when a scene happens again with the earpiece, and she kind of looks at her daughter and realizes it's affected by the noise. And I love that because no one at first could understand, like, my goodness, this thing does not like that. The, the eerie sound of, uh, like, you know, high pitched from an earpiece going off, it sets off something with them, and it gave them enough, you know, to get it, to trigger it, to kind of like it lose its control with her and it fell out, but then it got back up and that's when mommy had to shoot the shotgun. But um, I love the ending where um, they realize, and you do realize, and this is spoiler because I will note that again, um, you can tell there's more than one. Um, let me just say, I really think they possibly could do a second one. Um, it can be from another, um, point of view, another family out there. I mean, the way they did even the movies like, say, for instance, Cloverfield, they could do a second one. So I'm not sure how they want to face this out or how they want to, but I think it's a possibility now because let me just say, um, this movie, I think had a small budget and I think they made that three or four times over because this movie is number one. Um, on this Sunday evening and um, it took ready a player one out of number one spot and now it's number one and it's getting uh, rave reviews and I am one to concur with that. I think it deserves all the great uh, reviews it's getting. It was something well, th well done. Like I said, it wasn't really um, cliche and too pre predictable at times, you know, at all for me. I really enjoyed the overall storyline of what they were going. I just wish that we could have seen a little bit more at the beginning where it showed how this came to be with these aliens. It's just like, you just kind of see things are happening to show you, you know, newspaper, you know, clippings and all this other stuff and you see a little bit of stuff that he might have seen on tv but that was it you know of course you know him trying to reach out to anybody who's out there you know and of course you know him not getting any signal from any other country that he was reaching out to excuse me you guys um so that was the part i really wish they could have been you know went on to but of course like i stated they show you day 89 you know them traveling out for supplies and then of course like i said it fast forward to you know 400 plus you know days so yeah that's kind of all we we're going to get for that so if they choose to ever do a sequel for this anytime soon if they decide to it's a possibility now let me just also note that if you all did not know john krasinski actually was the one that directed besides being in the movie he directed for his first directorial debut he did an awesome job and then to make it even better he decided yes let me see if my wife wants to do it because emily blunt is a great actress and i thought that was another little check for him so but yes it was a great movie i really enjoyed it, it makes me enough so much that i really probably would want to go see it again and my rating out of a 10, I gave it about an 8.5. I thought that's a solid, I could make it a 9. You know, it wasn't really that much that was really wrong with it. But one thing I will say that I enjoyed from this, if you all noticed the creature, I got the vibe of like Resident Evil and I got the vibe of Stranger Things, more so Stranger Things than anything. Now, I will say this in um, relating to the, the sound aspect of it, that does remind me of the movie Tremors. Any small you know, mind of noise would and all would trigger it and it will go to wherever that's at. So I said, okay, that part I caught off the top. But looking at the actual creature, he was so ugly. But I love the part where anytime he was trying to hear it intently, he would open up his face and it would show his membrane and you could see it. And it was just like so and off. And the people in the theater, they were just like, what in the world is this? But it was so good. So, yes, that's all I really wanted to say. But, I, again, I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys go out and see it and enjoy it as well. Um, like I said, you know, they kept under wraps the actual creature. You don't ever get to see it in the trailers, really. You know, because it's always in presence of a dark, you know, viewing of it, whichever. But when you do see the big reveal, to really see what it really looks like, you know, the, my comparison is just as close as I can get to it to let you all know what it really looks like. But, um, yeah, the scary factor for that. But like I said, I think more so of a thriller than more scary horror. You know, no, no gore, no nothing like that. So, but with that said, you guys, I hope you enjoyed my review and I will see you in the next one. You guys take care.